trading ideas for the week of March 21, 2022. Last week, we had uh, like uh, other previous weeks, two stars. And uh, the question is, which one is more helpful under calculations? And is this really a wishful thinking? So Chairman Powell came with his uh, predictions and his ideas uh, about what the Fed is going to do in the United States on Wednesday. And of course, President Putin is launching his ideas and uh, going forward. So I think this cartoon tells it all as far as are they really living in a fantasy land. As far as uh, the events coming up, uh, we've talked about, again, intermarkets, how the global markets are really related and how the inflation interest rates are really predominant forces around the globe. So on Monday, we have the Germany's PPI, and we also will have many of the central banks around the world and the members speaking uh, next week, starting on Monday with the US Fed Chair Powell, and of course, Australia's Bank of Australia as a governor low. The earnings are winding down, but still we got some interesting ones coming up, starting with uh, Nike after the close. On Tuesday, Euro, as the ECB President Lagarde, he, she's going to have this speech, which we want to pay attention, especially after, uh, again, saying that they probably will have the two interest rate increases, at least because of the higher than expected inflation. Argentina will uh, come up with their current account. South Korea will have their PPI. South Africa will have their unemployment rate. And then we'll have um, two earnings, one before and one after on Tuesday. The Carnival Cruise will have their earnings before the open. And that will be really interesting to see how the COVID and the uh, price of the energy crude oil are competing forces and let's see what uh, CCL has to say. And of course, after the close, we have Adobe. On Wednesday, going back to inflation, we have the United Kingdom of Great Britain. They will have the inflation rate and their PPI. South Africa also will have their inflation rate. And again, US Fed Chair Powell will have a speech. Euro also will have their consumer confidence. And Russia was going to come up with their PPI. And don't forget about the 7.30 a.m. Pacific Coast time, the crude oil inventories. On Thursday, again, UK will come with their PMI numbers. And then we have the Mexico with retail sales. U.S. will have their current account. South Africa and Mexico, they will have their interest rate decision. And Japan will have their CPI numbers. Uh, again, it's Thursday and it's our gold trade. Um, another interesting uh, earnings will be the NEO after the close. So it, it will be um, interesting to see how was their sales and what they have to say. On Friday, UK has the retail sales. Spain have their GDP growth rate and the PPI. China, again, will have their current account. And in the meantime, we'll have Argentina, Italy, and Brazil with their consumer confidence. In the U.S., following up the consumer confidence, we have our own Michigan consumer sentiment. And also, U.S. has the pending home sales. And as always, every Friday, we have the Baker Hughes rig account. Um, last week, we had the balance of trade. This week, I thought let's talk about the current account. And the goal of this is not making you an economist. It's just giving you a little more clarity of these numbers and uh, how important they are. Anytime you look at these global numbers, just think about your checking account. Look at your own personal um, balancing act between the income and expenses and uh, your borrowing and lending. So basically, the current account it, it just records the value of exports and imports, which includes both goods and services and the international transfer of capital. So in reality, what it is, a current account, it measures the nation's earnings and spending abroad. And it consists of the balance of the trade 
net primary income of factor income, which is, or, or, or factor income, which is earnings on foreign investments minus payments made to the foreign investors and net of uh, unilateral transfer that have taken place over a given time. Now, it, it is the, the bottom line in these things is that the, the positive current account balance, it indicates the nation is a net lender to the rest of the world. While if you have a negative current account balance, that indicates that it is a net borrow from the rest of the world. And I think that's what all we have to take a look at and, and narrow it down at that. So with that in mind, I just want to give you an example. This is from 2017 of United States. So we look at the U.S. exports. We look at the imports. You can see, remember, we talked about the trade balance. So we are in deficit. And then we look at how much the primary income we had the receipts how many secondary income we received and how much we had to pay for the foreigners in a way of the primary income payments and second income payments. So net net, you can see there's a current account deficit. Now, when we come to the latest one, this is as of the last quarter of 2021, as you notice in our um, calendar, next week we'll have the United States, uh, which comes in March, and that's sort of for fourth quarter. Uh, you see, we've had the, the deficit from 2016, and we are running almost to $200 billion of um, deficit. So uh, the bottom line is, this is just gives you a little clarity. As you could see, there were a few uh, economies around the world, they will come up with their uh, current account. So you want to look at which ones are the surplus and which ones are the deficits. With that in mind, I wish you a wonderful week ahead, a prosperous and successful trading till we meet again next week. Thank you so much.